Welcome to 7 at 7, your daily dive into the Word of God. I'm Pastor Ryan, and to my right is Pastor Matt. Hey. Today we're going to talk about empty words. That was horrible. That was, Let's get into it. That was it. so great. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 5, starting in verse 6, the Bible says this, Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore do not become partners with them, for at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. So we see some dark and lightness stuff again here, but the main thing that we want to focus on is this, let no one deceive you with empty words. Because we live in this world where there's a million microphones. Everybody has something to say. We're literally speaking to you right now because we feel like we have something to say. Yeah. So what's the difference? How do we determine what are empty words and what are things that will feed us? Well, I mean, he's given a warning here to say, let no one deceive you. And that gives us an indication to what empty words really are. They're words intended to deceive you. There's a lot of deception. And one of the things, when you look at the word empty... Uh, one of the definitions is vain words. And so today you just you just find a lot of people um, just talking to expand their, influ their influence or to lead you in one direction or another. I think the thing, the difference between false prophets and, and pastors of the church, of God's church, is that mm. our intention is to lead you in the purposes of God and in, in the word of God. Uh, helps us to do that. We aren't teaching to accomplish our own ends in that sense of, of establishing our own our own kingdom. And that's really just, you know, if I can, just for a second, one of the things that are on my heart, it's just a lot of empty words right now, a lot of deception, a lot of people uh, seeking to build their own kingdom. And in the church, we have to stay alert. There's a reason that the apostle wrote here, let no one deceive you. Like if, if it was that easy to not be deceived, he wouldn't have to give a warning because we all could distinguish true from lie. But he's telling them to stay alert and pray the same way Jesus said, you know, stay alert and pray. Don't let anyone deceive you, but pay attention to these empty, vain words that come across your screen day in and day out. And people that are trying to uh, pull you in one direction, ask yourself why, like what are they getting out of it? Yeah. Yeah. I think. You know, two, one of the reasons why we have this and why we're so blessed to have this is because it's a it's a fact checker, right? So if, if you go on to the internet or YouTube or even on your TV and you go to Daystar or whatever channel the, the, the sermons are on these days, you can go and you can check and you can say, hey, is this, is what this leader or pastor or apostle or evangelist or whatever, are what they saying actually lining up with God's word? And many times they aren't. You know, the Bible talks but about... Before we even go on. Or politician. Or I'm politician, saying, yeah, saying, amen. What are they saying? Amen. You know, the, there's so many people who, I mean, any any motivation besides leading people in a growing rock, walking relationship with Jesus Christ, especially coming from the pulpit, is, is erroneous. And and it's, it's dangerous. So if we just look here, if you look at uh, verse 7, Therefore do not be partakers with them, for at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. And so you almost get a sense here. I mean, we got the scripture saying what the scripture is saying, um, that these vain words, these empty words are intended to push you in a direction that is contrary to walking as children of light. Yeah. You know, and so if someone is trying to usher you in a direction that's contrary to the person and, and likeness of Christ, then it's probably the wrong direction. And, and a lot of times there's a lot of worldly wisdom that, you know, may scratch our ears and it sounds good. Um, mm. But if it's intended to lead you in a direction that's contrary to the person and, and you know, character of Christ, then it's not a good direction. The Bible's called us to, to walk as children of light, you know. And, um, yeah, so... Yeah, and I, you know, I remember there's a phrase I forget if it's like if it, if all your friends would jump off of a bridge, would you jump off it too? Right. That, that said, every thing, mom, said every mom, said every mom ever. Yeah, ever. And yeah. I, you know, the 
when when you're a kid, you're like, well, mom, my friends aren't idiots. You know, they're not going to be jumping off a bridge. But now that I'm an adult and that I'm I'm dealing with other adults and things, you, I'm almost like amazed at how many people are jumping off these bridges. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Like, it's amazing how many people are so easily shifted and they're moving like they're on sinking sand and they're just going wherever culture or wherever pop culture or Hollywood or or whatever all these erroneous, uh, you know, these people putting out content, wherever they tell them to go. And if only, like, just be in this. Right. So like, you'd be able to know. That's the number one. So our number, you know, counsel for you today is, number one, if you're going to walk as a child of light, you have to uh, have your feet steady on the rock, God's word, Jesus Christ, the the word made flesh. And so we we build our lives on 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 the word of God and what God has uh, said to us, spoken and calling us the way that God is calling us to live. It's like the number one thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what would you say is maybe if we had two things. So we're saying read the word of God. I'm very surprised. <laughs> I'm just going to say this. I'm very surprised. Like the difficulty we have as believers of staying consistently in the word of God. Mm. And so, you know, we have to do that. Number one, number two, what would you say is the best advice for somebody saying, okay, I want to walk as a child of light. Yeah, well, I, I think that it's right here in the passage. You know, it says, it says, um, let's see. Therefore, do not be partners with them. So, so it's easy wow. to it's so easy to flirt. You know what I mean? That, like that's it's powerful. like it's that's like powerful. well, I don't like, you know, I don't like this pastor because he's a little, you know, he may be <laughs> heretical in this, this, and this. But I really like when he talks about this. So can yeah. I follow over here? But there, and, and also, like, when you say, like, not to be partners. So, number one, read the word of God. Number two, don't partner up with people that are not walking as children of light. Like, how easy is it for you to really get in the groove with somebody's argument? Or, like, there's a lot of people making a lot of arguments and having a lot of thoughts and opinions about certain things. And it's so easy to start identifying with those and you end yeah. up becoming partners with people that are walking in darkness because you're in alignment with their opinions. With and I think that's very mm. powerful for us today. So number one, read the word of God. Number two, be careful where you're partnering in your opinion. Uh, I once heard it said that when you believe the lie, you empower the liar. And so we know that Satan is the father of lies. We're not in partnership with his lies. We refuse to walk in agreement with his lies that would have us walk as children in the dark. So we're going to stand on the word of God, and we're not going to partner with people uh, that are walking in darkness, walking in light, children of light. Mm-hmm.